This show is for the sales leader who knows they have a pivotal role in driving outstanding sales results. Getting hired or promoted to manage a sales team is a big accomplishment, but you know you have to work hard to become a great sales leader. You are listening to the Divine Comedy of Sales podcast. Here's your host, coach and advisor to elite sales leaders from around the world, Matt McDarby. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Divine Comedy of Sales. This episode is all about how to build trust with your sales team. I'm Matt McDarvey, veteran seller, leader, coach and advisor to elite sales leaders all over the world. Really excited to have you join us for this episode. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Divine Comedy of Sales. Today's episode is all about how to build trust with your sales team, and it's such a critical thing for a sales leader to be able to master, to be effective at their job. Now, you may hear this, how to build trust, right? And think, well, shouldn't trust come naturally? I mean, do we really have to think about how to do it? No, I don't, it seems like it's forced. Well, the bottom line here is I've observed a lot of sales leaders over the years. I've led sales teams myself, and I know that it's super important to be able to build trust because we are either building trust with our people, with the people on our teams, with clients, with our peers, or we are eroding it. There's no neutral when it comes to trust. So what I've observed is great sales leaders know how to build trust and they take action accordingly. And their approach is, it's authentic, right? This is not about manipulating or putting on airs or creating artificial trust. In fact, there really is no such thing as artificial trust. We can't create that. It's the people that we work with who give it to us in response to our behavior, our habits. So I said at the top that, you know, trust is either built or eroded in every interaction. So when I say that great leaders know how to build trust and act accordingly, the first key idea here is that they look at every interaction. That doesn't mean that they write down and, and jot down a plan for every interaction, but they know with every interaction, they have an opportunity to build trust and they seek to avoid eroding it. Here's what I mean. I mean, they think before they speak or act, they think, albeit subconsciously, if they've been doing this for a long time, will this erode trust? Will this build trust? Let me give you some more specific examples here. Questions that great sales leaders pose to themselves and that I've learned to ask myself before I interact with members of my team are, does this interaction I'm about to have with this person or with my team, does this add to my credibility? Does this demonstrate my reliability? Am I showing my team that I am doing what I said I would do, that I can be relied upon to support them or to take the actions that I said I would take? Am I being open, candid with them? Am I being even vulnerable at times, revealing information that shows that I'm really making an effort to be open with them? So the questions I've just highlighted, they come directly from the research from Charles Green, David Meister. They wrote a book, I've referred to it a couple of times, probably will refer to it in future episodes, this book, The Trusted Advisor. And they offer a really simple and elegant equation that calls out what are the factors that positively affect trust. And there is one factor that negatively affects trust, which I will come back to in a moment. But what I said a few minutes ago was every interaction, great leaders know that trust is built or eroded and they think about, right? They sort of challenge themselves. Am I adding to my credibility? Am I demonstrating my reliability? Am I really being open and candid with my team? So those are the three factors that positively influence trust, according to Green and Meister. Credibility, reliability, openness, or intimacy. So it's a relatively straightforward thing to think about as you're about to interact with a member of your team or your entire team, a client, a peer, a colleague. Am I demonstrating any and all of those factors that build trust? If so, good on me, right? That's the approach. If I'm about to do something that does not demonstrate those 
factors that positively impact trust, I better tap the brakes here for a moment and rethink my approach. Why? Because if I don't, I will erode trust. And it's really hard to rebuild trust once it's eroded. So let me avoid that, right? And that's the way great leaders think about their interactions with others. So a second way in which great leaders that I've observed have, you know, they demonstrate that they know how to build trust and they take appropriate action is that they demonstrate, essentially, it's not about them, or if I'm the leader in this case, it's not about me. The fourth factor that I mentioned from Green and Meister's research, the one that negatively affects trust, is self-orientation, right? I'm pursuing my own agenda before yours. So great leaders know that high self-orientation is that one factor to be avoided. They have to go out of their way to demonstrate not a high self-orientation, but a low one. Or, put another way, a high other orientation, right? Being really tuned in and focused on the agenda of the other, the individual salesperson they're speaking with, their whole team, that client. And so high self-orientation is a factor that they really try to sort of contain and limit. Another thing that great leaders do to demonstrate it's not about them is they demonstrate real, authentic interest in others. How do they do that? Well, they ask questions. I know that I will, I probably have said this numerous times already in episodes you've heard, assuming this isn't your first one, but I'm really keen on people asking the question, not only of clients, but even the people that they lead, what are you trying to achieve? Talk to me. What's the outcome you're going for? What's important to you? And in so doing, we're not only gathering important information about what people are trying to achieve and forming a vision of how we can help, we're also sending a very clear message to them that, hey, it's not about me. I'm focused on you. So great leaders take steps like that and ask questions like those examples I just offered to demonstrate true, authentic interest in the people they lead. And then... Finally, when it comes to demonstrating that's not about them, is they never put their personal interests ahead of their teams. So tempting as a leader, right, to take action that will line our pockets or help us achieve a metric. But if it's done at the expense of others, we should not choose to do it. Why? Because that has a direct impact on the degree to which we are trusted by our people. And like I said earlier, Trust is easy to erode, easy to lose, but it takes a long time to rebuild. And so the leaders that know how to build trust and act accordingly, who know how to demonstrate that it's not about them, that low self-orientation, they really do check themselves and avoid putting their personal interests ahead of others. Right? Easy to say, difficult to do, but this sort of goes to your integrity as a leader. Will you put your personal interests ahead of your teams? In short, if your objective is to build trust with them, the answer is no, please don't do that. You should not do that. Let's model what great leaders do in this area. Driving great sales results is hard. Doing it consistently is even harder. There are so many obstacles that can prevent you from becoming the most effective sales leader you can be. Find practical advice you can apply right away by picking up your copy of Matt's book, The Divine Comedy of Sales, at www.divinecomedyofsales.com. And the third way in which great leaders build trust, right, they take action specifically aimed at building trust, is they, they're playing a long game. Right? They're making regular deposits in this trust account uh, trying to create a vision here, right? It's a trust account where we're making regular deposits over time and eventually reaching a point where the level of trust is very, very high and strengthens relationships. So great leaders will make these regular deposits in that trust account with individual members of the team or with their colleagues and clients by doing a few things that go right back to that trust equation I referenced earlier. They make these regular deposits by being credible. They do their homework. They know their subject matter, right? I'm going to demonstrate credibility to my team, to my colleagues, to my clients by being prepared, by doing my homework. 
that's the way that I ensure that I can make that deposit into that trust account. Will it pay off today? Maybe, maybe it won't. Long-term, it will. I strengthen my relationships by building trust. I build trust by being credible. How do I build credibility? I'm prepared. I know my stuff. I'm thoughtful in my approach. Another way that I'm making a regular deposit in that trust account is by being consistent and following through. This sort of goes to reliability, which I said was one of the factors that positively affects trust. In fact, it's directly connected to reliability. I need my team to rely on my message being consistent, my approach being consistent, the way I make decisions being consistent. They also need to see evidence that I can follow through. Why? Because I'm asking them to follow through on a regular basis. So my credibility as a leader depends on consistency and effective follow through. Deliver on what I said I was going to deliver. Be consistent in my approach and in my messaging with my team. And then another way that I can make these regular deposits in the trust account, which is what I've observed in great leaders over time, is they really are, they're just very open. They're candid. They're tuned in. Tuned into who? Tuned into others, their salespeople, their clients, other functional leaders, their colleagues, et cetera. So the best leaders out there are intentionally making these regular deposits in the trust account. And here's the key. They don't necessarily expect something immediately in return. Why? Because they know that if they're building their credibility, they're demonstrating reliability by being consistent and following through, and they're really being sort of open and candid and truthful, of course, with the people they interact with, that that will pay dividends over time. How many times as a leader do you need to call in a favor or get access to someone? It's in those moments where the trust that you've built pays off. So even if some of this feels like, boy, I don't know, it's not going to give me any immediate payoff, I'm saying, well, then maybe the immediate part is not that important. It's the long-term payoff that's important. So make those regular deposits in the trust account with your team and everyone around you. That's what great leaders do. So to summarize, I said at the top that the best leaders I've observed and worked with or worked for know how to build trust and act accordingly. And I think there are practices or approaches that they take that you can absolutely 100% apply in your own role as a leader or as an aspiring leader. You can look at every interaction as an opportunity to build trust and not erode it. How? Think before you act or speak. <laughs> think about whether you're positively affecting the degree to which you're credible or reliable or open and being intimate with your team. Those are the ways in which you build trust with people. Think about also, how do I demonstrate that it's not about me? How do I demonstrate that high other orientation or that low self-orientation? How do I show people I'm really not putting my interests ahead of theirs? And then finally, what will I need to do? What specific actions do I need to take? What habits do I need to develop? That will ensure that I'm making these sort of regular deposits in that long-term interest-bearing trust account with the people that I lead and the people that I generally have to influence and work with over time. So that includes clients and other people within the business. What can I do to increase my credibility? How can I demonstrate to them that I'm open and tuned in and really care? How can I show consistency and great follow through? Because these are the things that I have to do as a leader if I want to consistently build trust with the people around me. Was that helpful? I sure hope it was. I really enjoy talking about trust building. It's such a critical factor in a sales leader's success. And I'm glad you were able to listen in for these last uh, 15 minutes or so of today's episode. Now, in our next episode, we're going to talk a little bit about why sales teams need clear expectations. You know, some of the implications of a sales team being unclear about expectations may be obvious, but there are some other ones that I think are less obvious that we'll talk about. We'll also talk about how to address them and avoid 
being unclear in our expectations for our teams. I hope you'll join me for that episode. Until then, this is Matt McDarby, author and host of The Divine Comedy of Sales. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Bye-bye for now.